Okay, we're going to wrap up this uh, overall presentation with the elements to good artistic macro photography. They are essentially three. One, proper lighting. Two, the best composition. Three, excellent focus. We will discuss each of these in turn. Now, regarding proper lighting, if you're trying to take artistic macro shots, this usually involves a, the subtle pastel lighting in the early morning and it's going to involve natural light and not flash. Your early morning shots are before the sun actually comes up and shows on the subject. It's light out, you can see everything, but the sun yet isn't over the horizon. Or it can be an overcast day where the sun is uh, obstructed by clouds, particularly right after a light rain. A beautiful misting rain gets the foliage and everything damp, sparkling with uh, moisture, and then the uh, harsh sunlight is obstructed. Or the late afternoon after the sun goes down, those, that is another time where you can get your best shots. Now a whole workshop can be done on natural light, and I will do a whole workshop on natural light, but this is just an overview. Just know that early morning light tends to give you more bluish greenish hues, late afternoon tends to give you more orangish with slightly reddish hues. Overcast is good and neutral. You can control the amount of light you let in in three ways. That's with your shutter speed, how fast your shutter opens and closes, your ISO, which is your sensor, how sensitive your sensor becomes to the light, and finally the f-stop as we discussed earlier, how wide your shutter opens and closes. Each of these has certain strengths, each of these carries with it certain liabilities. Again, all of this is an entire workshop unto itself, but this is just to get you thinking. Finally, the proper angle. There are a, if you see a subject, you can take virtually a limitless number of angles of that subject. So you as the photographer, once you get your lighting underway, you got to get it at the proper angle. If there's light, is it kind of behind you, is it to the side, is it in front of you? All of these affect the actual outcome of the image. Let's show an example here. This is a horrible image. It's a beautiful butterfly. This is a beautiful flower. But I've taken a horrible image of it. Why is it horrible? First of all, this subject is up and down. I should have composed the shot like this first of all. Not like this, not horizontally. I should have done it a vertical composition. Secondly, the lighting is horrible. This is the middle of the day. It's a nasty yellow light. You can, I mean, just the whole color is ruined. The, I am not at a true plane of focus with this animal. So I've got yellow light, I've got shadows. I've also opened my f-stop to like f-16 so you can see a lawn chair in the back. You can see this. I mean, just, it's a terrible, terrible image. This is where I've done essentially everything wrong in my composition, in my lighting, in my angle, everything. To show this, I'm going to show this exact same animal now with a much, much better uh, everything involved. Here is the same butterfly, a great purple hair streak. He's in a shaded area. He's on a flower. I've got a proper angle. I've now got a vertical composition. I've got a true plane of focus, and rather than having horrifying midday light, I've got a nice overcast day. It's beautiful, and so his natural colors come out. I've got a beautiful, soft background. I'll go, I'm going to go back now. Look at that horrible that image is. This is black. I, I mean, I can't see any. It's just terrible. Look at how beautiful that image is by comparison. That is the difference between good macro photography and not so good macro photography. Another example, this is a giant swallowtail. Look at the horrifying colors here. This is blown out. It's in the middle of the day. I'm taking it at the wrong time of day. I've got a terrible yellow light. I've got it uh, stopped down to F16. You can see all this uh, clutter in the background that detracts from the image. The yellow light is washed out. My highlights are blown out here. I can't see any detail. Just a terrible, terrible image. My color's bad here. I did take it properly at a, a horizontal shot. If I take the same butterfly, 
find better lighting. Now all of a sudden I've got a creamy bokeh. It's pleasant to look at. This is harsh to look at. It makes you want to squint. This is pleasant to look at. It makes you relaxed, calm. This is an artistic macro shot. Um, so composition and focus. What do you want in? That's what your composition is. Do you want a horizontal composition? Do you want a vertical composition? What do you want to include in the shot? What do you want out of the shot? If, if there's a, a flower that you, doesn't need to be there, don't have it in your composition. If there's a branch or something that's cluttering it up, compose your shot so it gets out of the way. And finally, what is the best angle to get the finest photograph? And I'm going to show you some examples of this type of consideration. Okay, because at the end, what vision are you trying to share? So let's take a look at this zebra swallowtail. Okay, my lighting is superb here. The lighting is just beautiful. The colors are pastel and beautiful. The focus is perfecto. But it's kind of just a straight up center shot. Is that really the best way I can, you know, maybe if it's for a, a scientific piece where I have more, all butterfly and no background, that's nice. But what about if I do this? Is that a better shot? Is it a little more artsy? What might be wrong with this picture? Because let's look what I did here. I cut off the top of this flower here. Mm, that's kind of considered a no-no. I've got this distracting. When I go to here, now I've got all this in. Do I really need this in the photograph? Do I need this in the photograph? Is it okay that his tail is in alignment with this stem? It's a beautiful shot. I mean, the colors are nice, the subject is nice, I mean, it's beautiful, dreamy, everything's dreamy, but these are compositional considerations. How about this shot? Slightly different. Now I don't have the, uh, the tail is not there, but you know what, in changing the shot, the colors are a little different. I kind of like this color a little better, but this is, this is cooler here. Or, what about this shot? This is a uh, uh, vertical shot, and uh, it changes things greatly. None of these shots is necessarily right or wrong. They're just showing you compositional considerations that dramatically affect everything you're doing. And so you as the photographer, feel free to experiment with what you're doing, your composition, your lighting, you know, because the bottom line is, by understanding light and with creative compositions, you are only limited by your imagination, your vision, and your willingness to experiment. So have fun. And I'll show you some examples of some photographs just to get you thinking. This is a vertical shot I took of a crab spider in a, uh, gosh, I forget what kind of flower that was. But it's, uh, this is one type of shot. It's another vertical shot. These are vertical compositions I did. This is a cardinal jumping spider on a blade of grass. Now this right here is kind of a... Th this is a small moth, and I call this escape from hell. This looks like little devils after him, and these are flames going up, and he's got a little escape here. I just saw that and called it escape from hell. And this is a mantid shot. These are vertical compositions. This is beautiful light. And then there are horizontal compositions. Should I have stepped back? I'm kind of cutting off his antenna here. Is this necessary? Could I have taken a different angle? This is the angle I shot, but there's a million different ways. What about this? You know, these are all thoughtful considerations you want to give to your own shooting. This is a gecko. Could I have pulled back more and got more of the tail? I don't know, but I like the detail I got in here, and I kind of like this shot. This is a queen butterfly. This is actually a, a, another flower that it's sitting on. You can't see it because he's hiding it. This is a nice shot I was able to get. Here I used a little flash to get a slightly darkened background. I just kind of like that. This is kind of an artistic shot I enjoyed. On and on and on and on it goes. Macro photography and artistic rendering is virtually limitless. But remember this about macro photography. Macro photography is not glamorous. There I am sitting in the middle of a swamp. You get bitten by mosquitoes. You get bitten by deer flies. You get bitten by ants. You get covered in dirt and sweat and you find ticks in places where no one wants to find them. 
but I love it and I wouldn't have it any other way and I appreciate you watching this tutorial I do sell DVDs and I do provide workshops I also provide one-on-one -on -one personal instruction my name is John Kerner and I appreciate your staying here and watching these presentations and I get into much much deeper workshops but this is a overview of all the subjects you should think about when your own macro photography and I really hope you've enjoyed it thank you